Alright, Laker gang, welcome back. I'm going to be going over your chapter 9 test. I will not be giving the answers to these, but what I will be doing is explaining how you can find the correct answers for these. Some of them are kind of tricky, so I'm just going to be going over the steps that you need to follow to do that. So, let's go ahead and get started, and of course if you have any questions afterwards, you can still email me. So, for number two, it says mark all that apply. We are going to be looking for two correct answers here. And it seems like it's pretty easy just listening to those directions, but I will tell you that you need to be very careful and do what it says. It says whole U is four units left and four units down from whole S. So you would want to go to whole S and then see what happens if you go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Well, you go off the grid, so whole U is not four units down and left from whole S. Some of you, I'm afraid, might have went one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Wait, that's true. But no, that would be whole S is four down and four left from U, not the other way around. Don't get it twisted. Number two, we are working on a line plot. So you'd go ahead and draw that line plot. Pretty easy shape. We have three different numbers, one sixth, one half, and one third. So we'll make our three spots. One sixth, one third, and one half. So then after that, you have to count up your information. See how many of each you have. And that's how you'll end up making your line plot. So for one sixth, you have one, two, three, four, five, six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Come on now. For one third, we have one, two, three. So one, two, three. And for one half, we have one, two, three, four, five. So what you need to do, remember, is multiply the number of x's you have by each number. So 6 times 1 sixth, 1 third times 3, 1 half times 5. Once you have all of that, that's not going to give you your answer. That's only going to give you your total. So once you have those, you'll add each of those together. Put them in parentheses so you know what you're adding. And that gives you your total. To find your average, you have to do total divided by however many number x's you have. So let's count. We had six x's, three x's here, and five x's there. Six plus three plus five is going to give you 13. So your total divided by 13. That's what you're going to have to do for number two. So, number three. Julia measured the depth of snow in a shaded area of her backyard. The line graph shows her data. Between which two days did the depth of snow decrease the most? So, you are looking for a decrease. That means you need to be looking for somewhere on the graph where it goes down. And you need to find the largest decrease. So between which two days? Moving right on along. Number four. Use that table to figure out the correct values and describe how one sequence is related to another. So, the first thing you need to do for this sequence is find out what your rule is. So. In here, for example, we see that we go from 20 to a 40. So you need to find out what is your rule. To get from a 20 to a 40, what do you have to do? And then you need to do that same thing to get from a 25 to that. And then that will give you the answer for your unknown day as well as describing that rule. Number five. It's actually the exact same. This is a sequence here. When he worked one 
week, for the first week, he got six hours worked and he earned $54. And every time it's just a pattern. So you need to figure out what the rule is and make sure that it relates the amount he earns to the number of hours worked. So how much he earned compared to the hours. So what do you have to do to the hours to find out how much he got? So you can look at the first one, it's easiest. What do you have to do to a six to make it a 54? Whatever you do, you also need to do it to that 36. All right, we're chug-a-lugging along pretty quickly. Number six, again, you're looking for a rule. It looks like the figure is getting bigger every single time. So, figure out how much it's growing by, and then figure out what that next shape is going to be. Pretty straightforward stuff for that. Number seven, you are just looking for coordinates. Remember, it is going to be your x coordinate first, and then your y coordinate. So, I'll even give you one. Let's do the clock tower here. It is one over and one, two, three up. So that means it's going to be a one for the X and a three for the Y. So the clock tower is going to be at one, three. All right. So number eight, Lucy's house is located at the point shown on the coordinate grid. So remember it is X coordinate before Y coordinate. And then to find Ainsley's house, you go two units right and three units down. Pretty straightforward right there. We're gonna move right on along. Number nine. Each week Maria saves some of her allowance. The line graph shows the amount of savings for the first five weeks of the year. So Maria's savings increased from $30 to $55 over the five week period. Well, if you wanna find out if that's true or not, see how much she had at the start, see how much she had at the end, See if that increase is true. Basically, just use that line plot for number nine. Pretty straightforward. All right, number 10 is another tough one. Remember, whenever you're trying to find an average, you need to take whatever that number is. So, one sixth, multiply it by the number of x's it has. So, you've got one third times one two x's. Plus one half times three plus you've got two thirds times four and then at the very bottom of course you've just got five six since it's times one. Don't forget that whenever you're adding fractions you have to have common denominators so make sure that you have those common denominators. Once you add all of that up You'll divide it by the total number of x's you have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 7, 8, 12. You have 12 x's. So whatever your number is after adding all of this together, you'll divide it by 12, and that'll give you your average. All right. Number 11 looks like it gives you a chart age to weight, and you need to write down how you would show that on a coordinate grid. So you need to take these and change them to ordered pairs. And then this one you're gonna to have to think a little bit. How do you think the ordered pairs would be different if it was measured every week instead of every month? Well, just think. Imagine if you were measuring a puppy, if you measured it every week, how would your numbers be different than if you measure it every month? Obviously, you'd have more if you did every week, but how would those numbers be different? All right, moving on along. Number 12. Write numbers as ordered pairs. So take those numbers, turn them into ordered pairs, and then you need to think about some kind of rule. So what are you doing to get from that 1 to that 10? I'm sure you all can figure that out. And then for part B, you just take those ordered pairs and graph it over here. Remember that the first number 
in your ordered pair is always going to be your x value. The second number is the y value. So remember, x-axis, y-axis. Number 13, a scientist made a line graph. Just need to analyze that line graph. Be very careful when you're doing it to say if these things are true or false. Very confident in you all for that one. Number 14, the table shows the total number of tickets sold for the school play each day. So all you have to do is just graph those points. Again, pretty simple. Very confident that you all can do that. And then finally, 15 and 16. So, the graph shows a relationship between the amount of milk and water used in a recipe. So what you'll have to do is make a chart, and I'll start that chart off for you. Milk. Water. And you'll take those ordered pairs. So you can look at the first one. Whenever you have this one, you have one tablespoon of milk and you have four tablespoons of water. So use all of those ordered pairs to fill out the rest of your chart. Then you can find your rule for number 15. And then finally, number 16. Stephen is buying a new mountain bike on layaway for $272. If he pays $34 each week, how many weeks will it take Stephen to pay for the bike? So, what you need to do, you need to make a table for this one. So again, you've got week and you've got money. So every week he gets 34. So what would he have after two? You need to use this table to try and figure out how you could find how many weeks it's going to take to get 272. I'm very confident you all can do that. So, I know that this video was quite a bit different than how we usually do it, but I'm confident in you all. I'm sure that you can do well on this test. I just wanted to give you all a few pointers for each of these. So, good luck. I wish you all the very best, and if you still have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time in any way. But, it's been fun, it's been real, and it's been real fun. Keep it 212, Laker gang. Nunley out.